We're back and we're back for another tips and tricks video, this time diving into 25 aquatic tips and tricks. The ocean is one of the largest, most dangerous, but rewarding places to explore on the Ark, and it can be very overwhelming heading down there for the first time. And I'm hoping this video will boost your confidence when diving down into the deep depths. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Sitting on a chair underwater will allow you to use consumable items. It will also allow you to regain your stamina. Running out of stamina underwater can be an absolute nightmare. You can't make your way to the surface to get air, so you're likely going to die. Who knew that all you need to do is carry a wooden chair around with you in your back pocket? Lazarus chowder and cactus broth. Here is why they can be very crucial when consumed underwater. Lazarus chowder will give your player 85% less oxygen consumption while underwater, and 1.2% stamina per second, which means you'll basically have unlimited stamina when swimming. Cactus broth is a soup that was introduced with the Scorched Earth DLC. It has an effect on wild creatures that makes them notice you less, basically camouflaging you from them. Therefore, combining cactus broth and Lazarus chowder will enable you to get past the most dangerous threats when swimming underwater. Extremely useful in the dangerous underwater artifact caves. You can get through the whole cave and reach the artifact without any aggro from any creature. You can also combine the wooden chair technique if you need to top up on your cactus broth, as it can be topped up without the timer running out. The Spinosaurus the Tropical Crystal Wyvern and the Shadow Mane will receive the hydrated buff once they touch or submerge themselves in water, where their movement speed will be increased by 20%, attack damage by 15% and health regeneration by 25%, making them much stronger battle mounts. Having a land creature with you on follow will not make it swim up to the surface when dismounted. This is something I wish I knew when I started out on Ark. It can be quite frustrating when your team just swims off and leaves you for dead while taking a cheeky dip in the ocean. The Basilosaurus is a jack of all trades while exploring the ocean. A Basilosaurus is able to rapidly regenerate its health when at the ocean's surface. The Basilosaurus is equipped with a unique ability with being immune to all those annoying stuns and shocks that the ocean has to offer. It is immune to the Nidaria stun, where they don't dismount the rider or damage the Basilosaurus at all, immune to the Letrophorus shock attack and the Tusa Tufus grapple attack. With all these abilities combined, it makes the Basilosaurus a perfect tame to take with you in the most dangerous parts of the ocean, even though they do take health damage when below a certain depth. It is rather minimal. It would only really put lower levels at risk. All of these abilities are why the Basilosaurus is one of my favourite aquatic tames. The Megalodon has one of the deadliest pack buffs in the entire game. A full pack boost maxing out at 8 allied sharks in total. They have access to Nash, which is a bleeding status effect that drains up to 5% of the victim's health over 5 seconds. This allows them to take down far larger predators than the themselves. A high level megalodon pack with good saddles can be used to brute force your way for the most dangerous artifact caves. I always ride a basilosaurus as backup as the Nidaria are a big threat to your pack. The megalodons I used in this video were averaging 400 to 500 melee damage. It really does go to show how much the pack buff has an effect on their damage output. An alpha tusa tufus and alpha mosasaur can be killed for large quantities of black pearls and high quality fishing rods. The alpha tusa will drop fishing rods more commonly. Once you have yourself a good fish fishing rod, you're able to start fishing, and this is a great way to farm blueprints. It does take patience, but you can definitely find some good blueprints over time. Giant bee honey is the best fishing bait. It has a very short spoil timer and can only be stored as a stack of one. This makes preserving it a bit of a pain in the bum. However, what you can do is give it an unlimited spoil timer by equipping it to your fishing rod. You can just make a bunch of primitive fishing rods, which are quite cheap to make. So if you ever need honey for anything else, you can always go to your fishing rod, unequip the honey, and there you go. You got one honey. And on the subject of fishing, this leads us perfectly on to the next tip, which is cryopodding fish, which a lot of people still don't know that you can actually do. Capturing fish with a fish basket is the Chalamain's preferred food. Once a fish has been captured, a filled fish basket weighs 15 weight and you can refresh the spoil time once you dip yourself in water when it is stuck on your hot bar. And this is all fine and dandy, however you do need big fish to tame a Chalamain for a better taming efficiency. But the problem is finding those 1.5 plus whoppers or heavier fish which personally if unofficial that's the minimum way to be wanting to look for so what you can do is capture the fish in a fish basket release it and cryopod your fish that way you can give it an unlimited spore timer once stuck in a cryo fridge and you won't have to worry about carrying a bunch of filled fish baskets around with you worrying about their spoil timers when you have enough fish and you've found your high level shadow main you can place all your fish baskets down be sure that the waters are clear of piranhas and hesperonis or anything annoying that might kill your fish throw out all your fish and recap 
capture them. Fish are not affected by cryosickness, so you can throw them out repeatedly. Another thing to mention is if you're playing on a server with the structure collision placement turned off, you can place a wooden cage over the fish to stop them moving around, so you can easily capture them in a fish basket. This will not work on official servers, unfortunately. And if you are looking to tame a shadow main and need a little bit of help, I do have a good, quick and in-depth fjorda guide on how to tame one. I'll post the link in the description of the video and in a pinned comment. You can capture anglerfish, ichthyosaurus and mantas with a fish basket to reset their mating timer. So this can be very useful if you like breeding these aquatic beauties. I don't think I've bred any of these creatures before, but hey, that's just me. A small taxidermy base can be used as a hidden storage box when placed underwater. Very useful when playing on a PvP server to hide your gear. If placed in a good spot, they can be extremely hard to spot for other players. You can ride a Mega Shalong and Diplocolus without the use of a scuba tank. The Mega Shalong is equipped with its own oxygen vents, giving the rider breathable oxygen. Swimming above a wild Mega Shalong can also give you oxygen. The Diplocolus cannot be ridden until it is in the water. Once in water, hold the access key to be able to ride it. Once on your Diplocolus, you can suck oxygen out of its bum at the cost of the creature's oxygen stat. Throwing giant bees honey off a raft can temporarily calm the lead sick fees. Stick the honey onto your hot bar. When the lead is aggroed on you, just throw it into the water with the hot bar key and it will temporarily calm the big boy down. It will probably come back for you, but if you've got enough honey, you can definitely get to where you want to be. There is still hope for us pirates yet out on the seas. Are you struggling to find those much needed high level aquatic tames? Well, with the Desmodus night vision and the snow owls heat vision, this can improve your chances of finding those much desired aquatic tames. The Desmodus night vision is so good that you can see pretty much as clear as the light of day when looking down into the ocean. If there was ever an underwater Argentavis, then the Dunkleosteus would be a great competitor, giving massive weight reduction for a variety of heavy resources, which are plentiful in the oceans. The only downside is that they are extremely sluggish and will most likely need a strong bodyguard to protect it from the dangerous threats in the deep ocean. They are also the only aquatic creature that can damage stone structures. An Ipheosaurus can be used to kill Eurypterids for easy black pearls. The Eurypterids do not deal any torque or damage to the Ipheosaurus. This makes this a great method of finding yourself small amounts of black pearls, especially useful on the island map where there are no natural black pearl clam spawn locations. Using a metal hatchet to chop them up seems to be the best way to gather the black pearls. And while we're on the subject of black pearls, I'd love to show off my two favourite easy locations to find yourself some black pearl clams. My first location is going to be from the Ragnarok map. You can either spawn in at the southwest to spawn point, head south down the beach, and I'm heading for this rock here in the distance. Once you have reached this rock, here's a little peak on the map. This is where we are located. You want to dive straight into the ocean from this point. You will instantly see the area where the black pearls are located. You're looking for this big cluster of reeds directly in front, and this is where all the black pearl clams are located. There is a good amount here, and you can come away with a decent amount, and you can just pick them up with your hands. And here are the coordinates of this location. My absolute favorite location is from the Lost Island map. You're looking for this big lake in this area near the volcano. You want to head to this location on the map and these are the coordinates. And at the bottom of this lake, there are bunches of black pearl clams asking to be snatched right up. There's nothing at all that spawns in this lake. I've never seen piranhas or anything hostile. Easiest black pearls you'll ever gather. Unless you have a black pearl gacha, of course. A basilosaurus can be killed for large quantities of oil. It will probably drop the equivalent of about seven oil rocks. The Mega Chillon will passively produce rare flowers and rare mushrooms in its inventory over time. These two ingredients are used in a wide variety of useful recipes. I I left this guy sunbathing for a whole day of gameplay and he produced me heaps of flowers and mushrooms of the rare variety. The Tusa Tufus can rapidly heal its health when dealing damage to a creature in its grapple attack. In this clip you can see that the Tusa heals around 200 to 300 health with each hit on this Megalodon in its grapple. It begins at around 14,000 health and after killing the Megalodon has gone up to 17,000 health so it's healed about 3,000 HP just from killing this Megalodon in its grapple. Another thing to note about its grapple attack is that it will slowly inflict torpor to any creature in its grapple without having to damage the creature at all. But it does take a very long time. You can also grab most creatures and take them to where you want to tame them. Finding high tier blueprints is a very important aspect of Ark. And there are three underwater caves in the game that drop exceptionally high tier loot. The Caverns of Lost Faith and the Caverns of Lost Hope from the island map. Both caves spawn ridiculously high level creatures and do need the right tactics to get through them. I have shown a few methods already in this video 
video. But if you are looking for a more in-depth guide for blueprint farming, I do have a top 10 blueprint farm video uploaded on my YouTube channel. So I highly recommend going to check this one out after this video. I'll also leave a link in the description of the video and in the pin coin. Cams of Lost Faith is much easier than the Lost Hope, spawning less creatures and less dangerous creatures. Three unique crate spawns will spawn in each cave, a selection of blue, yellow and reds. However, these blue and yellow crates are not the typical ones that drop terrible loot, with the blue and yellow drops potentially dropping you loot like wreck saddles and flak armor blueprints. The third cave I want to talk about is the underwater caverns from the Crystal Isles map, spawning up to around 8 or 9 loot crates. I always lose track of how many is in this cave, varying from deep sea loot crates, crates from the previous 2 underwater caves, and standard red crates that you find in caves, meaning you can find a wide variety of different loot in this cave alone. A much easier cave to run than the previous 2. Similar threats do spawn in this cave but not as in high quantities, making it a much easier cave to run. Once you tame a Leopleurodon, it will increase the rarity and value of any loot box you open. That is if you can find one. They are one of the most rarest creatures in the game. I'd recommend only running deep sea loot crates or caves that spawn high tier loot crates. When you move far away from the Leopleurodon, the buff will continue for 6 hours. Be sure not to die because you will lose the effect. There is a lot of speculation out there as to whether they're actually worth it, as of course they are only temporary, but I'd like to point out this is the first time I ever found a Rhinian Nafa saddle in a deep sea loot crate. Maybe the Leopleurodon did give me good fortune, or it just got really lucky. Who knows? You can tame an Alpha Pleura without aggro or any bug repellent. All you have to do is just drop it in the water and you can simply stick that Broth of Enlightenment up its bum. And boom, it's just as easy as that. You can gather raw prime fish meat from Megalodons by using a metal hatchet or a metal pickaxe for best results. This may seem like common sense, however, most of us ride creatures in Ark. But the problem is the majority of land creatures and aquatic creatures will not gather any raw prime fish meat when harvesting the Megalodon's corpse. When I was new to Ark, I had no idea that the Megalodon dropped raw prime fish meat, due to the fact that my creatures never harvested any. Ah yes, the Baryonyx. In my opinion, one of the best tames in the entire game. Extremely versatile. They do not possess an oxygen stat, which makes them the perfect tame to open the door for exploring the ocean. Being able to wield your weapons while riding makes them a great taming aid, and they can heal extremely quickly when force-fed fish meat. But the main reason why they are part of this list is because of their dead tail spin attack, which can stun small to medium creatures and dismount players from their mounts. The Baryonyx can be used to get rid of all the mantas around a Basilosaurus. Massive groups of mantas like this can deal a lot of damage to players and mounts. You can steamroll them with the Baryonyx with barely taking a scratch, making Basilosaurus taming super easy. It can even be used to stun Alpha Megalodons. I'd be more than happy to take my Barry up against an army of these things. Being an extremely slim dinosaur, extremely agile, with the ability to jump makes the Baryonyx one of the best caving mounts in the entire game. And also to mention, the Baryonyx is I believe the only creature that will be completely ignored by leeches. So if you haven't tamed yourself a Baryonyx already, now is a good time to start. You will not regret it. Everybody wants to tame the two Goliaths of the ocean. It can be a bit of a struggle finding a high level. So here's my two favourite spots to find the Tusatufus and the Mosasaurus. Starting off with the Tusatufus, you want to head over to the Ragnarok of map. Head over to this location on the map. Here are the coordinates. Very far out from land, near the world barrier. And you just want to head straight down from here. You want to be searching around this area that's highlighted in green. Once I reached the bottom of the ocean, I spotted a level 145, a 140, and two horrible levels. And this was all in the space of a minute. Personally, I think this is one of the best places to find Tuso in the entire game. They are very common in this area, and Ragnarok has pretty good natural high level spawns throughout the map. And my favorite favorite Mosasaurus location is going to be the center map. This spot is amazing for finding a high level. You want to head to this part of the map and around these coordinates. This is a large trench situated next to this small island in between the redwoods and the mainland. Head out towards the redwoods and go straight down from here and you'll find this trench that is usually full of mosasaurs. I ended up finding six in this area, one being a 140, a level 100, two 95s and some lower levels. And this is going to be the end of our aquatic party. Please do like, comment, share and subscribe if you did enjoy the video or found it helpful in any way. I'd really appreciate it and I will catch you all in the next video. See you later alligators.